good afternoon to one and all mm. am i audible mm. Mm. any doubt in previous class portion what we discussed in the previous class uh, no ma'am hello yeah yeah i can i have no doubts ma'am okay My screen is visible to you all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. In the previous class, we discussed uh, introduction to UML. The scenario and to understand the domain of the uh, research, what we are going to do and how we can make use of the UML. Uh, diagrams and the various uh, things, structures and associations, how the constraints like uh, aggregation, composition, relationships, all those things in our uh, world designing the Research scenario. So, in today's class, uh, we are going to see the second part of the um, software design and use human use case modeling. What is design and what are the and any research work and techniques for making good design decisions, good uh, design document process totally eight people huh? or nine people uh, how many students in this batch eight ma'am eight. eight people ma'am okay I think one more has to join ah huh? uh, yes ma'am okay ma'am I show you then we will discuss the various Okay. Choice. So, good design documentation process and design patterns. What are the what is pattern? What are the design patterns available? How we can make use of different design patterns according to the type of uh, application or the domain what you are going to choose because uh, uh, patterns are uh, fixed frameworks or we can say it is uh, mold or we can say the skeleton so whatever we give as input to the particular pattern it will produce the same kind of uh, models or same kind of applications so in that case we have to choose
दीपक दीपक या मैम वॉइस ऑफ ब्रेकिंग राइट या 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 ऑडिबल कृष्ण वर्ग Yeah, the screen is visible. Ah, uh, no, ma'am. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's uh, connect disconnected. Ma'am, we can try. Ah, uh, no, no. Now I can see the screen, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the next part we will discuss software architecture what is uh, what are the different types of software architectural models available and how the models uh, can be applied according to the domain and application context then we will discuss arch architectural patterns the various architectural patterns that can be used for any given domain application so the first topic is process of design we know very well process means it's having a sequence of activities so how can you define what is a process how it is different from a... uh can we, can, we can say that process is like an algorithm yeah so while designing the human we need to follow process methodology yeah so there we have to analyze processing of the design yes so the pro, uh, as uh, as you said process will have a sequence of activities or uh, we can say the algorithmic steps we need to follow and systematic approach we need to follow so that we will not miss out any important uh, aspect so we uh, as uh, algorithm will write down all the sequence of activities or the steps uh, or pseudo code which we need to follow while executing an, a process so if you follow the steps 1 2 3 as per the uh, pre planned uh, activities you will get the expected output so here the process of design we are going to discuss about uh, to implement the system in functional uh, requirements so we will uh, mention and identify all the required functional requirements and non functional requirements of any Uh, activity while uh, re representing the content quality platform you are you following the iso if you want to follow the iso standard in your project implementation or in your research work so the iso is uh, has given the set of uh, rules and regulations or the protocols and the various constraints we need to follow so we will frame the design in such a way that that fall into iso standard or if you take if you want to create an research work or a, a paper uh, which falls under cmm techniques or which falls under uh, some other agile process or uh, you want to follow some standard because your target audience or or the customers are expecting that kind of result so what we have to do we have to follow the sequence of activities already follow the people who already uh, achieved the results so the best practices that we have to follow then only we can expect the uh, the required output and while adhering to general principles of good quality usually the process of design uh, talks about the quality and the standards and uh, how to uh, follow the systematic and best practices in our uh, work so that we can get the expected result a designer is faced with a series of design issues so that that should be addressed uh, while following the process of design and design means creating an uh, pictorial representation of your proposed work in that case uh, while preparing the design model of your proposed work you have to follow some process so the process will define the, the set, step by step 
procedure or best practices that you need to follow while making the design process so the a designer is faced with a series of design issues we need to take each and every issue into consideration so that the same issue will not arise uh, while going for the implementation so we are we have to design in such a way that the uh, identified issues which should not occur there are uh, sub -pro problems of the overall design problem each issue normally has several alternative solutions say the design options the designer makes a design decision to resolve such each issue and we have to come out with the best optimal solution so these are the parameters or the points we must consider uh, while going for the uh, design of your process so uh, design uh, in this particular module we are talking about the design design means it's the pictorial view or the uh, simulated model of your proposed research work so while making the pictorial view of your proposed research work uh, how we can make an perfect design so while uh, going for the design what are the steps or activities we need to follow to get the expected result so if you take the process of design um, the two diagrams will uh, reply come uh, come up with exactly same solution so uh, if the two different designers are uh, given the same issue each designer will uh, have a different solution uh, mostly if the one problem is given to a set of uh, 50 students or 60 students in a class and if each student is uh, designing his own uh, solution or he is creating his own pro uh, program the so pro uh, programs we will get different 50 uh, different programs each uh, program will have the personal touch of the particular student but the thing is we have to identify which uh, pro project or which uh, proposed model will give the perfect result in terms of time uh, less time uh, less memory less cost more effective more, uh, more uh, efficient result uh, fault tolerance and for speed of the project throughput so by considering the major factors like time cost memory uh, we will say which project uh, which particular design model gives the best result once the decision is made new issues are arised to resolve the issues designers may have to go back and revise the previous discussions and change the requirements so during the design process uh, it's best to identify the problems in each and every stage of your design process if you feel something is not up to the mark or it is not the best optimal solution you can go back and you can revise the content so that we can uh, expect the once you found something is wrong something is missing some te the technology or the application or the algorithm what we choose for the uh, proposed work is not up to the mark or you come across some different method that can provide more efficient result so in any stage of your design process or in your uh, uh, proposed work you can have to go and revise back everything according to the uh, new technology or the new algorithm what you found so uh, once the design process is fixed the sequence of steps what we are going to do in the proposed work is fixed uh, based on the Uh, pseudo algorithmic steps are based on the sequence of uh, functional and non functional requirements of the proposed work we have to go for the uh, decisions so we have to decide so when we will go for decide means if we have more than one solution with us and then we have the choice of choosing the best one so for yes for the given same problem we will have n number of solutions so from the available n number of uh, solutions we have to choose the best optimal solution from the available feasible solution we have to identify the best optimal solution based on our uh, domain as well as the various factors what we are going to follow in the design process say the making a decision a knowledge it's based on the knowledge of the requirements so if you are well known about the knowledge uh, about what we are going to do in your process the requirements are well known functional requirements non non functional requirements other uh, and other uh, re relevant uh, data is well known to you governmental policies and other constraints uh, ethical aspects everything is well known to your uh, about the work 
then if you have the complete knowledge about the process what we are going to do then we can make a decision then the knowledge of the design as created so far so whatever data we collected whatever literature review we, we did so far uh, whether we did some uh, uh, we referred some papers which gives the basic idea about the domain we referred some papers uh, which are already implemented and uh, some papers and works already uh, deployed and currently used and uh, any issues you identified in the existing uh, or the latest research work and the algorithms with the different algorithms applied in the same domain so everything should be taken into consideration uh, about the design process before you go for making the decision and knowledge for of the technology available what are the technology available available at present and uh, when the previous work was done what are the technology available why they chosen the particular technology when they did uh, the particular research work now some advanced technology advanced algorithms algor uh, alg advanced uh, languages and some packages are available so we have to choose to so say the previous work may be carried out by using some sql statements and uh, uh, some java pro uh, coding now we have uh, now we can go for instead of going for the sql normal uh, rdbms uh, tables we can think about uh, no sql databases using advanced uh, object oriented uh, data we can not, not only the numerical values we can go for audio video as well as other data sets everything we can take into consideration as an input we can go for uh, no no sql databases and object oriented databases and instead of going for uh, python we can go for uh, ml based uh, programming languages and other uh, tools and uh, packages available that also we can make use available and how survive and is there uh, any advancement with uh, comes uh, in future whether our system will support the upcoming new advanced technologies that also we have to take into consideration knowledge of software design principles and best practices you should be well known about all the methodologies methods available to implement the proposed work so from the available all the methodologies and methods you have to choose the best one which can give you the maximum a result knowledge about what has worked well in the past so you are while through the literature review only will come to know which algorithm gave you the maximum efficiency which one worked better than uh, the previous works so that should be known to the while making any design decision so these are the things while going for design process we have to fix the all the steps according to the standards based on the quality and other parameters once the design steps design process is fixed then we have to go for the design decision while going for the design decision we have to consider all those parameters so that you can by considering these important points you can to make an best decision so if you take the design space they given you an a diagrammatic representation of the design space is the possible design that should at achieved by choosing different sets of alternatives of often called design space so here the design space is the framework so whatever work you are doing or some research you are doing you cannot do the research for the entire world or to the entire country or something so you have to fix your target audience and you have to fix your own boundary subject to the constraints subject to the conditions so you so this uh, i am proposing some work this pro work can be the the result what we are i am going to produce from my proposed work can be applicable only to the farmers or it can be used only by the scientist or say you are doing a research based on agriculture based project but uh, the, you cannot do the agriculture uh, your project cannot be used by the entire world or you cannot do the project uh, research work for the all the agriculture plants and other uh, every every kind of product you fix uh, these are the only plants i am focusing i am going to address only the diseases associated with the particular plants and uh, this also belongs to a particular region alone i am going to collect the data set from the particular region alone based on that data set only i am going to uh, i am created this design space i am proposing this uh, design process 
making this uh, these are the decisions constraints i fixed and i am following this methodology and other best practices subject to the given specification i am producing this result this result what i produced is based on the uh, predefined space or the framework like that we have to fix our boundary with the given range uh, we cannot say what i did will applicable is uh, applicable to the entire world so here they given an example so they are taking the client server where they have the a number of clients and uh, they separate a user interface layer is there program uh, the they are using the java codes visual basic as well as c++ codes so subject to this uh, particular uh, so the, uh, the pro proposed work will work with these kind of languages and these kind of clients and these are the services we are providing through the design space so any doubt so far so we started with uh, what is the uh, process of uh, design we discussed what is process and what is the design process means uh, the set of or the sequence of activities which we need to carry out to achieve the result and uh, while going for the actual process or function functional implementation we have to design our own uh, function in such a way that that produces the efficient result and that should be applicable to the uh, that should follow the predefined standards so that it can be acceptable by anyone then we discussed what, what are the design decisions we have to make while going for the design process what are the factors we need to uh, boundary or the design space of your proposed work any doubt so far no ma'am no ma'am yes so the next topic is a component module and system so we know very well system means the entire system or the complete uh, um, complete project or the complete uh, application and module means uh, if the system is having a number of components or uh, if it is very complex one we will subdivide it into a number of modules and components so that each component can be independently implemented by different design different committees or different teams and we all put together we will make the complete system so a component is a piece of software or hardware that has a, a clear role so while fixing the component size each component has to fulfill some work or job a component can be isolated allowing you to replace it with a different component that has equivalent equivalent functionality say i am designing one component another person also creating one more component if my component uh, if the same component or functional aspect is given to two different programmers if uh, my comp my coding is working perfectly or some other person's coding is working perfectly for the same uh, specification uh, in, uh, the component can be replaced or it can be extended or it can be modified so that uh, each component can uh, compiled executed in an independent manner many components are designed to be reusable so nowadays we are creating the projects by making use of the existing components so we will take the login process from uh, one project already implemented uh, password verification from some other project and uh, front end uh, design can be taken from some other project and so we will take the existing components or modules already available from different different projects and that will be customized and that will be modified edited updated according to the new project so because uh, the login process validation process and uh, updating the data in the back end database and uh, retrieving the data from the back end to the front end uh, user interface so those uh, those components are mostly used in most of the projects so the existing uh, front end back end connectivity and other uh, user interface activity and uh, creating the reports those things can be taken from the existing old projects and that can be put into the new project and that should be customized and updated according to the new proposed project so that is called a software reuse so we are using reusing the existing components uh, from other projects 
and uh, the new projects are created. Conversely, other uh, per, uh, perform special purpose functions. So if you, any special purpose function need to be implemented in your new project, that should also be considered. And according to the uh, new logic or innovative idea, the new functions needs to, needs to be created fresh. So we know very well components means they are independent uh, software code uh, that can be used and reused again and again. And uh, the components from different old existing projects can be put in together and that can be modified, updated according to the new project. And a module, uh, a component that is defined at the programming language level, for example, methods, classes, and packages are modules in the Java. So we know very well uh, modules means a different uh, component or the libraries. At the same way, in the application uh, project also, we'll have a number of modules. Each module will perform a predefined task and if you take the system a logical entity having a set of defined responsibilities or objectives and consisting of the hardware software as well as both so a system is the complete application that can be that can perform and fulfill the required uh, uh, functionality which is deployed in hardware, software, and other uh, uh, components like Wi-Fi, cloud, and the servers, uh, whatever modems, routers, whatever we need for the particular project to work, that is called system. Module means a project will have a number of modules. Each module will fulfill a particular task. And component means a component can be reused or it can be taken from other uh, old projects also that will be put together to fulfill a part of the project. So any doubts, sir, so far? Ma'am, uh, the system design, so, yeah. uh, is it restricted only to digital logic or we can use any logic for the system design? System design, uh, we are, any any logic we can use the thing is we have to choose the logic which will give you the efficient result or that gives you uh, the optimal say if you have n number of feasible solutions uh, ah. say if you are going to a mobile shop uh, there ah. are n number of, yes hello yes ma'am tell me ma'am yeah say for example you are going to a mobile shop you want to buy a mobile so if you ah. go there go to the shop you will find different varieties of mobiles, maybe Android mobile, Apple mobile, and other uh, different varieties. And you will choose the one which suits to you according to your need, according to the other, where you are going to apply, where you are going to use the particular product. So huh. n, number of, n number of solutions are available. Huh. From the available n number of options, huh. available n number of uh, uh, products, you, you will choose the best one according to the need. So the so like that the system uh, the method what we are going to choose for the design should be based on the what we are choosing should be the best one from the available if you are given n number of choices you have to choose the one which is giving the maximum uh, op efficient result so you have n is a number of feasible solutions you choose the best optimal solution okay yes here uh, that uh, given you a diagram uh, which differentiates one system from uh, the subsystems each system will have a number of subsystems say here a system that is part of the large system that and uh, which has a definite interface so here they have taken the system with the name responsibilities and uh, we have the component. The component name is mentioned here. And we, uh, within the system, we have subsystems. And uh, the subsystem is belongs to the system, which is the composition of the system. So from one system, we can have a number of subsystems. All the subsystems are part of the main system. So all subsystems, part of relationship is mentioned here, one to many. So one system can have a number of subsystems. And all the subsystems combine together, together, the aggregate is the main system. Defined in the programming language level, say we have the modules and frameworks. 
as well as we have the each uh, a system will have a number of components and each component will have its component name and uh, while uh, making the designs or software design and uh, system design we can follow two types of approaches so you will be knowing top down approach and bottom up approach so this uh, top down approach is mostly followed in uh, the structured programming languages like fortran c cobol uh, those kind of languages so before making use of any component or a subsystem that should be uh, declared defined functionality should be uh, defined then only we can call the well, then only we can refer them in the main programs but uh, in case of bottom up approach anywhere uh, uh, whenever you need you can declare a new variable or you can declare a new function or component and you can make use of it no need to mention everything in the beginning no no need to include uh, it, so it's not uh, compiled uh, uh, during runtime itself you can declare and you can make use of it it no need to be mentioned during the compilation time itself say in top down approach or in top down design first design the very high level structure of the system so the high, overall high level structure, structure of the system should be defined then gradually work down to detailed design decisions that low level constraints so we will uh, take the complete picture in the beginning in the while mentioning the complete picture we will specify the this many number of components we are going to use these are the uh, classes we are going to use these are the functionalities we are going to make use uh, this is the if you are using going to use any embedded code that also should be mentioned if you are going to use, make any odbc connectivity that should be back end process should be initially declared and defined and finally arrive at the detailed decisions such as the format of the particular data items the individual algorithms that will be used so then uh, we will start defining each and every process in we, uh, each and every process what are the sequence of uh, steps we are going to execute to perform those tasks what are the variables and other constraints classes we need so that will be mentioned one by one so the overall complete picture of the system will be taken then each and every component will be defined and uh, declared then within the component or within the functional modules what are the activities we are going to carry out uh, each and every step will be in detail that will be mentioned so that is the case uh, followed in top down design but in case of bottom up approach make decisions uh, about uh, reusable low level utilities so while creating the software framework itself what we will do we will identify what are all the components we are going to use again and again in different uh, levels so the reusable components will be identified and their utilization will be identified then decide how those will be put together to create the high level constraints so they will not think about um, the system as a whole they will not think about in internal each and every lines of code as a whole so they will think about what is the main functionality of the project and uh, whether the uh, what are the functions we need for that particular main component and you uh, explain and uh, de uh, declare and define the main functionalities and accordingly whatever things we needed for a uh, other main core idea will be identified and what the necessary other preconditions and uh, associated with the core idea will be added whenever it is necessary so that is the main difference between top down uh, design and bottom up design in top down design we will take the high level structure complete system then components then modules and uh, within the modules functions each and every line of code but in case of bottom up we will identify the core idea then according to the core idea what are the other necessary things then you go for the other necessary things according to the need so you need out uh, with respect to what is the top down and bottom up design process so we started with what is the design process then we discussed uh, how to make the uh, good design decisions and what is the design space and the framework then we discussed the difference between the component module and the system 
then how we can represent the component module and system in an UML diagrammatic form. So here we taken the object diagram and class diagrams to represent uh, the relationship between systems and subsystems and components. Then while making the uh, design itself, uh, there are two major approaches available, top-down approach and bottom-up approach. What is the main difference between this and that? So this also, uh, if everything is predefined, every each and every step, what you are going to do in your work is well known. In that case, we can go for top-down approach because uh, each and every uh, the uh, system, modules, components, internal lines of code, everything is predefined. It's a, a protocol, strong protocol is available with you. Then we can go for top-down design. But you are not very clear about uh, each and every code, line of code about your process. Then in that case, we can go for the bottom-up approach. We have only the core idea. Based on the core idea, we will uh, identify the relevant things and the technologies and other components according to the core idea when the process starts and when we proceed with the project. In that case, we'll go for bottom-up design. So the next topic is the different types of software design. So the different types of software design, first one is architectural design, class design, user interface design, database design, algorithmic design, protocol design. Architectural design means the overall system architecture or the project architecture should be identified as the software. In, um, so uh, the subsystems and the components as well as the process of deciding how those will be connected with how they are in, interact, including their determining their interfaces. So here we'll identify what are the components, what is their uh, functionality and how they are going to interact with each other and how the interface, user interface design is going to uh, be done. And that will be identified and that can be represented by using architectural design process. And if you take the class design, so here the design of the various features of the classes, such as subsections, associations, attributes in uh, interactions and states can be easily represented by using class design. So for the proposed work or the proposed uh, um, software system, we have to identify uh, how many classes we are going to use. What are the major classes available in the, so we'll take the problem or some issue, we'll analyze the problem and we'll create a problem statement about the given situation or the problem. In the problem statement, we will identify these are the problems. These are problems I am going to solve it. And how I am going to solve this problem means by using based on the objectives. Then to achieve the objectives and to solve the problem, I uh, will take the design space or the domain or the framework in that who are all the stakeholders, who are all the end users, who are all the participants, and what are the major classes I need to frame. So we'll identify the major classes. Based on the identified major classes, we'll go for the class diagram or the class design. Based on the class design, we'll go for the uh, objects and other, uh, uh, based on the need, we will go for other diagrams like sequence diagrams, use case diagrams, everything. So if you want to represent your problem statement and the proposed work by in terms of object orientation, then we can go for class design. And uh, user interface design, uh, overall the uses of the proposed work, who is the administrator, who is the end user, who is the client, and who are all the other administrative and supporting staff, everything should be identified. So that can be easily represented by using use case diagrams and what are the use cases and who are all the different uh, stakeholders, the interaction among the system and the stakeholders can be represented. Then uh, how the, uh, we have to design the interface between the user and the system in such a way that the maximum efficient result can be attained. So that is taken care by the user interface design. Then database design. So uh, what are the data? What is the input data? What are the processes we are going to perform? which kind of data we need to preserve it for a long time and uh, where we are going to store the data in the back end. So in the back end, uh, depending upon the type of input, type of process and the results what we are producing, 
accordingly you have to choose the back end whether i am going to use uh, fox pro dbase or uh, sql or mysql or i am going to use some db2 or um, if it is a huge volume of data whether i am going for people soft or if my data is of different unstructured form audio video and other uh, results in that case i will go for the mongo db crunch db or neo 4g or cassandra kind of uh, different applications will go for the corresponding back end then uh, the algorithmic design so for any proposed work we have we have to go for the algorithmic steps also or we can say the sequence of activities we have to identify uh, we can represent the sequence of activities in an textual form in an english like statements using algorithmic statements while writing the algorithmic statements we have to follow the pseudo code why because we uh, it should be free from the language any syntax and semantics should not be used especially in the algorithmic design and once the algorithmic design is complete according based on the algorithmic design we can go for the graphical design that is the diagrammatic representation based on the algorithmic steps and the graphical de design document we can go for uh, the implementation or coding and based on the need of the project we can choose uh, whether we can uh, use java python or c++ or c program or we be c++ so you are anyhow your algorithm and uh, design should be free from the language and packages then the next design is called protocol design the design of um, communication protocols that are necessary for uh, transferring the data if it is in the distributed environment your project is based on distributed environment or internet based or wifi based in that case the communication technology or the connectivity places an important role so you have to uh, design the uh, your audience whether your audience are only the local people within the organization or uh, the outside people so depending upon that you have to choose the protocols for your project so any doubt uh, so far different types of software designs what is architectural design what is class design database design ma'am uh, in this different types of software design yeah uh, each type of design like architecture and class will it change the software or uh, the same software can be done using three or four methods no no you are creating and that's what here the architectural design Uh, you have to. Uh, it's uh, depending upon the application also. If I am a, a architectural design is the, the tools, the diagrams, the notations. What we are going to use is already fixed. Architectural diagram means we should have use only squares, rectangles, arrows, with direction without direction. Those are the notations, and we'll use some uh, for data store. We'll use some drum structure. and uh, ah. we will mention the logical flow logical flow logical component grouping will be mentioned in dotted lines solid flow will be mentioned ah. labels will be used ah. with the arc or within the rectangle and squares we will mention the names names of the components or the subsystems okay. and the various uh, the hardware software components can also be mentioned in the or architectural diagram so the hardware components like uh, data store client uh, node uh, server routers so everything can be mentioned in the uh, architectural design so we can design the software using two or three methods yeah okay so uh, here whatever we are discussing you have to think about uh, the concepts with respect to uh, your proposed work because you people okay. are now in the literature review stage you are going to uh, you are going to start your project you are doing your post work after the post work is over definitely you have to start your literature review so literature review will take the relevant papers uh, in the title that you might have given some approximate proposed title the title may belongs to some particular uh, major domain so you might have identified the major domain and uh, in, within the computer science uh, various uh, subjects 
you might may choose any in artificial uh, your pro, uh, research work may fall under aiml category or it may come under iot category or it may come under network security category or it may be some let's say the uh, computer vision kind of things so uh, the uh, like a networks or a programming side or in the database side so uh, your project your research work may come under some particular subject or the category in the core the core subject of the computer science domain once the core domain uh, within the computer science is identified then you will choose the latest technologies and latest subjects within the subject uh, to prove the results what you are going to propose uh, you have to choose some application through some application only by applying your novel idea or algorithm or the methodology or the design model you have to apply in some particular uh, application then you have to retrieve the results through the results only you can prove what i proposed is efficient one compared to the existing one subject to the condition yeah ma'am yeah so whatever topics we are discussing we have to think about in terms of uh, your proposed literature uh, review what you are doing so you will be re re reviewing uh, some old uh, published journal papers and old published submitted and uh, completed research works thesis mphil thesis phd thesis so based on the based on that only you're going to propose your new idea okay. so the next yeah the next topic is called principles leading to a good design so why why we are uh, need to study this the principles leading to good design ma'am because the design will have multiple solutions as you said we need to find the optimal design yeah so to find the optimal design we need to know the principles yes so uh, in our research work also how we are starting means we are taking the existing work yes ma'am yes ma'am so in our research work also what we are doing means uh, say we are uh, taking the already uh, completed research work and what methods techniques uh, what kind of idea they followed and how they produced the best result uh, that we are studying understanding accordingly we are trying to propose a new method that can produce Uh, good result than the existing one so that is actually in research also there is uh, some work already there some manual work is going on and we are trying to find out a more efficient result than the existing one yes ma'am the same way uh, we have to uh, go through the best principles already followed by the previous researchers and the previous uh, people who are working on the same domain we have to read and understand their content then only we can able to
So the principles leading to good design, uh, we need to read and understand, and we have to follow, and we try to follow more efficient than this. Then only we can expect a good result. Already existing. So here uh, they have given you some uh, general principles need to be applied while uh, designing and good software. So the goal to achieve when doing good designs or why we are following the uh, good design decisions means uh, to increase the profit by reducing the cost. So our um, if you want to show some work is more efficient than the existing one, we have to. Uh, we can prove it in terms of cost. Uh, if the old work is uh, uh, the old work is uh, taking um, hundred percent cost, but your work is taking only fifty percent uh, of the previous cost means, then your work is good one. So if uh, less cost, less memory, less time, and uh, accurate, more accurate results is produced through some process, then that will be accepted as a good work than the existing one. So we have to prove our work is best in terms of cost. The cost should be minimal, but it should produce maximum result. Ensuring that we actually conform to the requirements for solving the customer's problems. So whatever the requirements specified, specifications, whatever the specification uh, given to us, the specification should be uh, implemented in our uh, work and the functionality what they are expecting, which are stated in the functional requirements should be fulfilled. So it should fulfill the requirements and it should have the uh, specified uh, configuration and specification and it should produce an efficient result than the previous results. Accelerating development, this helps reduce short term cost helps ensure the software reaches the market soon. And the thing is, uh, while making any project or research work, uh, it should, uh, the uh, budget should, it should uh, fall within the budget. It should not exceed the more than the budget. Who is Deepak Vardram? He is also a student. Yes, ma'am. And we try to uh, eliminate um, uh, while doing the process, uh, some new, new cost will arise, uh, some new, new functionalities will come into the picture. So you should not uh, much deviate from the uh, fixed framework, especially in uh, during research also. Uh, you will be um, after your core, core paper, uh, your coursework is over and uh, after the uh, additional skill development courses are given to you, after one and a half years, you will be eligible for submitting the synapses. So during the synapses time, you will be proposing and based on your literature work and based on your post work, uh, you will have some knowledge about the subject and domain. And you might have fixed your domain and your application. Uh, what kind of uh, results I'm going to show uh, through the literature, you might have got some idea. So based on that, we'll propose and title, we'll fix your four or five objectives. Then uh, some proposed methodology will state and uh, the expected uh, outputs or the contributions what you are uh, uh, expecting from your research, you might have stated. So based on that, you will go for the Synapsys registration. Synapsys presentation you will give. And one uh, in the Synapsys presentation also, what they will take, check, they will check the title is okay. The title is already existing or not. And in the title also, it should not be very broad. It should be very specific. It should solve one or uh, it should uh, resolve so three or five objectives. According to the objectives, the title should be framed. And uh, title and objective should be should match. And the objectives, uh, as a research, there should be three or four objectives. Those objectives should be uh, proved by the, through their work. And you have to state some methodology. That methodology should not be already existing. It should be your proposed more modern or advanced novel technique. And uh, through that um, methodology, you have to solve and uh, get the results for the stated objectives. 
that object you should fulfill and satisfy the title so those things only they will check so in that case your goals uh, and the achievements what you are going to state in your proposed work should be should not be should not violate or should not accelerate often what you are stating during the synopsis that should be uh, achieved within another two years uh, that should be uh, submitted as a thesis so after uh, submit uh, submitting your uh, synopsis presentation and registering the title after working some time again you should not change the title you should not change the domain you should not change the objectives so um, making changes often or oscillating or violating or deviating from the title objectives methodology that will increase the cost that will increase the time duration uh, you need to do again for the new domain you need to so do literature review you need to do other uh, uh, related works and increasing qualities such as usability efficiency reliability maintainability uh, reusability those can be uh, that that should reduce the overall cost so whatever objectives and whatever um, methodology you proposed uh, that should give uh, be more that should be more use uh, usability aspect and that should be more efficient one and that should be reliable one and uh, that should be maintainable by all the customers or the stakeholders and it should be have the reusability option and other object oriented uh specifications so based on that only uh, we can say the particular uh, the principle what uh, whatever the methodology or the work to what you are proposing is a is a good one so these are the principles that will lead to a good design decision of the proposed work so if you take the principles leading to good design uh, these are the already well known and proposed and currently used in the uh, software industry as well as in the uh, research community so uh, well known uh, like uh, we have the agile process extreme programming pair programming spiral models win win spiral models they are all well known and it's used widely in the uh, corporate or as well as in the industry these are the uh, already uh, well well proven best 10 principles so those 10 uh, principles are stated as principles leading to good design these same principles we can use it not only for the project design we can use it for the research design research framework also so what is the first principle means design and divide and conquer so it's well known uh, algorithmic technique so we have to divide the the problem statement or the domain is very big or the problem statement is very big we have to divide the problem into so many n, n number of small small mm. sub and we solve each and every sub unit combine the solutions together to get the complete solution so divide and conquer is an algorithmic method so any complex problem can be solved by subdividing the problem into small small sub units and uh, get the solution for each and every sub unit to get the complete solution the second main principle is increase cohesion wherever possible so the co cohesion means uh, the dependency should be reduced among the components and the independent each uh, component or subdivision uh, module should work as an independent component so that uh, if the dependency is less we can avoid uh, the total complexity can be eliminated so we can do any changes at any time and we can modify uh, each and every functionality that will not affect other components so the cohesion should be very high and the coupling should be less coupling means uh, the dependency so the one uh, one module is totally waiting for the input from some other module and if the module is not giving the in, uh, giving the output as input to the next module then the both will be waiting for some input so the data so if more system, the same way the systems components front end back end the dependency is very high means then uh, the deadlock condition the hanging problems will arise 
keep the level of abstraction as high as possible so if you take only the abstract entities like classes only the relevant classes and uh, through the abstraction if you have the data encapsulation and data hiding uh, capability implemented in your components then the expected result will be very good increase reliability where wherever possible increase the reusability so the reusability say the same function can be used again and again in different different places or you can go for recursive functions or you can go for um, what is that call by value or call by reference and the modules can be used in different different uh, projects so then the line of coding coding will be reduced and within the project itself if we are using call by value or macros or call by reference or recursive functions uh, then uh, the line of code will decrease and uh, through the call by reference or call by uh, pointers or <coughs> other recursive functions the efficiency will automatically increase then the sixth principle is uh, reuse existing designs and code where possible so don't go uh, do not uh, start anything from scratch you take uh, the, the existing work from the existing work you try to modify update and try to produce the uh, advanced result if you start from the scratch from the first line or from the declaration path to the complete thing then a lot of uh, if uh, the pro project is uh, some work is already there it's already proven with 50% result or 60% result efficiency you are uh, the already some uh, framework and uh, the front end back end other designs the algorithmic steps methods all those things are already predefined so your work aim is to increase make use of the same thing you can replace the algorithm you can replace the methodology or you can change the programming from c++ to java or python you change the front end technology back end technology or you go for the advanced technology but use the say, complete skeleton or use the pattern or use the framework existing framework you take the uh, the boundaries that uh, the previously they may used old data set you go with some new data set so like that you take the existing work and try to modify update and uh, try to increase and uh, the increase the efficiency of the existing work to 50% to 100% so the reuse of the existing code design patterns that will uh, reduce your Uh, research work time the seventh principle is design for flexibility you should not be uh, it should not be a protocol complete protocol you cannot uh, change anything like that so it should in all places during the design phase analysis phase coding phase implementation phase in any phase if you some new technology comes that gives you the best result there should be some option for adapting to the new technology there should be some option for changing the pattern from one one method to another method changing the uh, coding uh, from uh, one language to another language there should be some option for multiple uh, platforms not only it will work only in windows it will work only for android mobiles or it will work only for apple laptop it should be platform independent so like that we have to consider so many factors so that the flexibility will increase the overall efficiency then anticipate obsolescence so you have to think uh, how long the work can be used say i am creating a uh, work using some c++ or uh, say python uh, how long the project or the research can be used for another 5 years another 10 years or another 15 years so uh, what is the lifetime of the proposed work that should be identified then design for portability so uh, it should work in the laptop as well as it should work in the mobile phone uh, it should not require a special uh, hardware configuration software configuration and uh, uh, predefined uh, network configuration so it should be in a uh, the pro research work or it should be in a position to um, move from one place to another place so these are the things we need to consider the same way 10th one design for testability
so you should have the option for uh, all kind of testing say black box testing white box testing third party testing process alpha testing beta testing and uh, usability testing then only the product or the research work will be universally universally accepted by all the people so these are the 10 design principles we need to consider uh, while going for good design decision if you follow for these kind of uh, uh, design decision techniques while proposing a uh, research work or framework, uh, then only it, it will have the complete quality as well as quality standard. So, uh, so far we discussed 10 methods. Each and every method they will discuss uh, individually. So, the first design principle, uh, what is stated is divide and concure. So, in a, what is divide and concur means separate people can the original development work that can different from each other. An individual software engineer can specialize in this component, becoming expert. It is possible for someone to know everything about the system. So, if the pro, uh, work is very big one that can be divided into small components and each component can be given to different different uh, team of people or different individuals and each individual can uh, find out the solution for each for, uh, each component and that can be combined together to get the complete solution each individual component is smaller and uh, therefore easier to understand so to reduce the complexity and to independently make different components of the same product by different team of people, we can go for this design divide and concur technique. A distributed system is divided up into clients and servers. A system is divided into subsystems and the complex problem can be divided into small, small sub problems. So any doubt, uh, what is the divide and concur concept? I mean, divide and conquer. Yeah. Uh, the time complexity will be less, but the space complexity will be more, right? Yeah. Both will be less only because uh, time complexity is based on uh, how much time it takes to execute the process. And space complexity, how much memory it occupies uh, during the uh, execution of the process. Oh, okay, so we, we will not take the whole thing, but we'll take only a small part. Yeah, the whole, the process is very big one and we will divide it into some 10 small uh, subcomponents. Each subcomponent will be independently designed uh, solutions uh, will be identified. So we'll have 10 small subcomponents. What uh, Each is an independent component. Each can function on its own. And uh, to get the complete solution, say for example, uh, if you take the ATM system, it's having a number of functionalities like a credit, debit, mini statement, uh, um, so change mobile number, link other, loan payment, uh, utility payment, like that. Yeah, there are more than 10 to 15 activities or 20 activities involved in each uh, ATM system. So in, instead of putting all uh, functions in under one button, we are dividing the, we are having 15 different buttons main button, sub buttons, within each sub button, we have another sub button. So we have a number of menus, buttons, act, actions, events, yes or no conditions. And uh, if, uh, if the, say the credit process is not functioning also, it may show the balance because the balance statement, uh, balance function is independent of credit process. Even uh, the change of mobile number is not supporting also, it will show you the mini statement or if the, there is no money in the ATM machine also, uh, you can go for, the, if the credit process is not working, even uh, the debit process will work <coughs> independently because uh, credit and debit is totally independent of each other. And uh, the, say the current, uh, you have current account as well as the um, uh, normal savings account. Your current account is uh, inactive also, the savings account you can make use. Even your savings account not working also, you can go for the loan payment. So like that, uh, they are making each and every functionality as an independent one. Even one function uh, is not supporting for you also, you can get the other services. 
Okay, I'm going to So the de second design principle is uh, increase cohesion wherever possible. So cohesion principle is an extension of the divide and conquer principle. The divide and conquer simply says no divide uh, things up to smaller chunks. Cohesion says it is to uh, intelligently. So in, uh, while dividing the big problem into small subcomponents, we have to divide in such a way that each subcomponent is complete in its own it should be an uh, it should function independently without uh, depending from without any dependency from other uh, components so you cannot make a component as small as possible but uh, each component should fulfill a particular objective say we are dividing the atm process into credit process debit process but in the credit process it's having its own uh, enough uh, it's fulfilling an action and if you go for balance statement, it fulfills the balance statement. Just it will take only the balance amount from the database and it will show you, but it's complete on its own. The same way, if you take mini statement, it will pick the last five, 10 transactions and it produces the report, but it is complete on its own. So whenever we go for divide and conclude also, we have to consider each and every uh, small component should be complete on its own and it should fulfill a service. A subsystem or the module has high cohesion if it keeps together things that are related to each other and keeps, each, keeps out uh, other designs. So we have to consider, uh, we have to divide in such a way that each subcomponent fulfills an operation so that the cohesion uh, should be high. Say the various uh, in, increase cohesion wherever possible. Say the various uh, cohesive co concepts are functional, uh, layer, <coughs> communicational, sequential, procedural, temporal. Say if you take functional, uh, facilities are kept together that uh, perform only one comp uh, computation with no side effects. Everything else is kept out. So a uh, com complete process or a complete action should be fulfilled. Say if you take the communicational facilities for operation operating on the same data are kept together and everything else is kept out. So the uh, operations which are interrelated to each other to fulfill and task will be uh, as an, taken as a component. Good uh, classes exhibit communicational cohesion. So like that, uh, we have to, while making in the design, while subdividing the divide and concur also, we have to think about the function, whether the subcomponent fulfills an functional aspect, whether it is belongs to a particular layer, whether it is a, a transport layer or communication layer, and com compute communicational, whether the particular component can communicate with some other component based on the need, and whether the sequence of activities are fulfilled, procedural aspects are fulfilled, so like that, we have to consider so many factors to achieve the cohesion. So the third principle is reduce coupling wherever possible. So if the coupling means the dependency among the functionalities, coupling occurs uh, when there are, there are uh, in dependencies between the modules and one module to another module. Say, for example, if you take the first diagram, the components are, uh, there are, uh, five components, five modules. Each module is uh, interconnected. Uh, all the modules are uh, connected with all other modules. It means uh, one module is depending on input and output from remaining four other modules. The same way, uh, the second module also dip, uh, expecting the input as well as output from all, all the remaining other four modules. If one functional module uh, faces an issue, then that will affect the remaining four also. If one is not uh, well, one particular module is corrupted, then we cannot expect any result from all other four modules because they are highly coupled. So one defect in one particular module will affect the processing and functionality of all other modules also. But if you reduce the coupling, and here if you take the second diagram, the same five components are there, five functional modules are there. But here, 
uh, the first module is connected with the remaining two modules and uh, some modules are connected with only one module so if something wrong happened to one module uh, the remaining four modules can independently work also without getting some input or output from other modules so wherever the coupling or the dependency among the functional components are less we can expect more efficient result the same thing is applicable to the research work also if you are uh, you are fixing the objectives while fixing the objectives of your research work you are fixing four or five objectives if a first objective output is given as an input to the second objective second output uh, uh, output based on the second objective only you can able to prove the third objective your third objective is totally based uh, based on the uh, results or the output from the first two objectives then they are totally coupled with each other so if some one mistake happened in any one uh, implementation or one uh, uh, statistics then that will affect the you cannot at least if out of four objectives uh, the four three objectives are efficiently proved and stated with the perf perfect result that is good one mistake uh, some first objective you cannot able to fulfill also you can change the methodology or the technique or uh, concepts and you can produce good result so if you if the all the objectives are interlocked or if they are independent dependent on each other we cannot able to get the result so the coupling should be reduced as much as possible not only in the design process as well as in the research work also any doubt any doubt in the third design principle no ma'am so the fourth one is uh, reduce coupling wherever possible so here we have to consider Uh, the various aspects uh, like uh, content uh, what we are um, stating in the work and uh, common uh, the use of global variables and uh, uh, control controlling the uh, uh, controlling one functionality through another functionality stamping data so there should not be any data dependency or uh, control dependency or routine call should not be there through one function internally you are calling another function or within that you are calling one more function because you calls and uh, uh, using the type cases inclusion importing of data and other procedures those things you should be you should consider to reduce the coupling the fourth one is keep the level of abstraction as high as possible so if it is uh, uh, if you are following high standard of abstraction uh, definitely you will get an uh, your coding will be very less and your um, uh, you will be using efficient uh, statements and the time will reduce memory usage will reduce same abstractions like uh, classes methods are supported directly by the um, programming languages other abstractions like associations are present purely in the nodes used by the designer so abstractions work by allowing you to understand the essence of something and make important decisions without knowing unnecessary details so we are hiding the unnecessary data uh, from the end users say for example if you take the atm uh, transaction itself what's happening inside how it's retrieving the data from the back end uh, tables how the updations are made in the back end databases that is totally hidden from the uh, front end uh, end user the internal processes are totally hidden from the uh, end user only the necessary data is provided to the people and the same way while during the implementation also we have to take only the relevant data irrelevant data should be eliminated abstract uh, abstraction data encapsulation data hiding and uh, uh, the efficiency all those things should be taken into consideration the same way increase the reusability wherever possible so the first the first is to design for reuse and the second is to design with reuse so the reuse should be taken into consideration in each and every stage of your research work 
say in the analysis stage, design stage, implementation stage, coding stage, uh, justifying the results in all. So the reuse should be from the beginning, not in the last. And uh, the second is design with reuse. So while designing itself, you take the already existing uh, patterns, frameworks, models, and uh, reuse it as much as possible so that uh, it's already proven, it's already having the uh, results. And you can refer it and you can say based on, by taking this as an base or this as an uh, already proved, justified, published work, I am from this work, uh, I am starting and I am showing the result. This is my starting state. From this, I am proceeding to the next state. Important strategies for increasing reusability are generalize your design with the, as, as much as possible. Uh, three design uh, principles, follow the design principles and design your system for uh, contain hooks. So all those things should be taken into consideration for reusability. The same way reuse existing decisions and code wherever possible. So the already uh, available code designs uh, can be used and cloning, we can have the cloning of the existing content. Uh, start from where the previous work is stopped. So somebody published and uh, submitted a thesis uh, this year and you are going to start this uh, work in the same domain. So from the same place, you start and proceed. And design and flexibility. So there should be some option for flexibility. That is, uh, you should uh, support and accept the changes wherever necessary. The same, the thing, uh, anticipate obsolescence. So you have to think about how long the technology will be used. Uh, you have to think because the technology is changing, the uh, methods uh, are changing every day. New, new concepts and ideas are coming into picture. You have to think about the recent trends. You have to think about the upcoming ongoing research work. Accordingly, you have to plan it out. Then design and design for portability. So it should not be a fixed one. It should have the option for changes. It should have the option for uh, moving the uh, process and activities from one place to another place. It should support for uh, different domains, different uh, platforms. Uh, the same concept logic can be applied to the relevant uh, similar type of projects. Uh, if you are doing and work for some particular uh, group of people, the same thing can be extended for another group of people. All those things should be taken into consideration. Then design for testability. Your project uh, or the proposed work should have some option for testing. So you should say my work can be tested in this angle. If you test my work in this aspect, you can uh, you can show the, get the result like that. Um, it should have the option for testability. So any doubt for the ten design principles what we discussed so far? Uh, if we use uh, design reusability. Mm. Uh, will it lead to plagiarism? No, so you, if you are uh, referring, you are taking some existing work and you are representing in your uh, research, you have to say, say you, that's what you are mentioning the uh, citation now. So I have, uh, you will mention the citation one. In the citation one, you will mention uh, this, the who are the author, where it is published. So if you cite, it won't create plagiarism. If without citation, if you mention, it will create plagiarism. So you are telling, this is my base. The, uh, already the researcher has did this work and he has proved the result he has already published. I referred that I found it is useful for my work. So I am taking that as a um, base work. I am proceeding further. Okay, ma'am. Like that you have to cite the existing work. Then you can proceed further. Okay. So any doubt so far? When is your next class? Uh, today, all three classes are off online, no? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, 10, 30, 10 to 12, you had one uh, first class. Uh. 
again when is your next class 2:30 uh, first class we had from 10:30 to 12:30 okay so second is 12:30 to 2:30 then 2:30 to 4:30 okay so any doubt so far no okay if no more doubts uh, so today i think uh, we can wind up now because uh, i am in uh, that uh, youth festival we have 36th in inter university national youth festival is going on i am one of the coordinator for the music uh, competition going on the jrs auditorium so in between i taken the permission and i came for the class and uh, uh, how to resume back to the work also so today we will stop with this and uh, if possible in the next class uh, we can have another uh, 15 minutes extra to come also so any doubt so far no ma'am okay so i already shared with you uh, part 1 as well as part 2 ppts as well as i given you the assignment questions also and i uh, based on this particular module alone i have prepared some uh, relevant questions what kind of questions can be asked in the exam like that so that also i will share it with you uh, so please go through the content and today's class also if you have any doubt ask me in the next class okay thank you thank okay you. yeah shall we end the uh, class yeah yes yeah. ma'am yes thank you all thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you